So it's uh, all play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Western Villa fans and welcome back to For the Love of Pomegranate podcast and what feels like a bloody age since we were last on. It's I think it's five or six days since we were last on. Um, apologies for our absence, but uh, delighted to be back as Aston Villa are back this Friday against Chelsea in the FA Cup, a Chelsea team that we got a good look at in a 6-1 humbling of uh, Middlesbrough during the week as well, Paddy. And uh, I suppose that's probably the best place to start on, on that game, does it mean anything, I suppose, if we were looking into it in regards to Friday? Well, <clears throat> you can you can compare it to the fact that we played Middlesbrough um, in the FA Cup in the last round, albeit we were away from home. They lost away from home 1-0. They won 6-1 last night. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we'll take from it, to be honest. I don't know whether the same team will even be out there on, on Friday. They have an awful lot of players, like, and the players coming back from injury. Mm-hmm. So you know, play is to see players like Ben Chilwell coming back in and getting uh, getting 60, 70 minutes under his belt. It's good for him, but not good for us. So, um, good player. Really, really like Ben Chilwell as a player. Um, and it's just unfortunate timing that he's back for this one. But look, we're gonna have to beat the best to, to win this competition anyway. So, uh, we've just got to treat it like any other game and and go and hopefully get the same result as we got the last time in in. Uh, in Stamford Bridge. Yeah, and, and you said they have a load of players, but they have also, with loads of players, comes loads of injuries, it seems. Wesley Fofana, yeah. Reese James, Marco Correa, Trevor, which I love if he was fit, because everybody, well, anybody who watches this should know my, um, I just, he, there's some players that just befuddle me as to how they've ever gotten this name of being £60 million pound player, and, and, and he's just one of them. Uh, Trevor Chalaba, Carney Chekwueka, uh, Romeo Lavia, Christopher Nkuku, Malagosto, Robert Sanchez, Leslie Ugocho- Ugochoku, and Nicholas Jackson away at the at the AFCON. It's, an, it's a rather sizable list that they have out at the moment, and I suppose realistically, I'm just trying to t- tot it up here in my head, you could, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, there's 11 players there, You uh, and you could make make a starting 11 out of that team that will perform well in the Premier League, Paddy. Like, um, I know they've they've been able to weather, like they haven't really had somebody like a Reese James in and around the squad in, in a while and when he's come back he's gotten injured and same with Wesley Fofana but it's, they're, they're still a formidable a, a formidable outfit with Thiago Silva and Colwell there and, as, as the two centre halves and ironically enough I think if Aston Villa are going to catch them anywhere that's where they're going to catch them but uh you know, I think the the good news for us, I suppose, looking into this, Paddy, is that I'm interested to hear what Unai has to say when he gets in front of a in front of a microphone now with regards to our injuries. Because is Jacob Ramsey back? Is Pau Torres back training? What's the story on Luca Dean? I think he's due back in and around now. And obviously, where do we stand with Ken Kessler Hayden? So you know, we're not. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot to come from this press conference from 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 our side more so, and I'm not too worried about their side if that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you there. That like they, they could literally pull, you know. There's 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 a load of players on the bench that that didn't play last night that that could come into that team. Um, no one that I'm particularly worried about. They're the decent enough team out, with the exception of maybe Conor, Conor Gallagher and Mudweka coming in there. They yeah, could possibly change things up for them. Um, with regards to to our team, yeah, I'd like to see if, if Luca Dean is back just to switch things up if needs if needs be. Um, or or change it mid game just to just to change the the, the plan of attack. Um, with regards to Kane Kessler Hayden, I think we might see him. I think we might see him on the bench. Um, from what I can gather, they've done here is they brought him back as cover at right back, and um, they've obviously we've signed the right back and let him go out unknown to his, to oh. to his team at the moment for the rest of the season. So. He's one for the future. Kane Kessler is in the present. He's plenty of game time under his belt. Um, he had a really good game against Manchester City in the FA Cup for Swindon a few years ago. So well capable of doing it at that level, albeit not a, not a full strength Manchester City team. But uh, I'd have absolutely no problem with him being around the team. We know, we know what he's capable of. 
I'd much rather see him around the team than and have every cons on the right side of, of the fence, but I'm a broken record saying that. So um yeah, it, it and, and look, there's there's other things at play. Uh Bubakar Kamara's wife just had a baby. Is mm. he gonna be available? I predict he probably will be available. Um, I was worried about that one for a while and it was very kind of her to have the baby in the middle of the break and uh, allow Buma Kakamara to possibly get to training in the meantime. So, uh, yeah, he's going to have his hands full. He's got he's got three kids now and they all look under three years of age, I'm going to say. So, uh, no, congratulations to him and, and and thanks very much to his, his wife for going in the middle of the, of the break so we can uh, we can hopefully have him on Friday night and definitely have him next Tuesday. And that's important for us next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is very important as well. And Friday night is important as well. I know a lot of people are saying bin off the FA Cup or whatever like that, but I, I don't really subscribe to that to that vein of thought. Um, we're, <coughs> I don't think we're going to I win think... the FA Cup. But, well, actually, it, it, the draw could open up nicely the way, it's, the way some of the, the teams have gone. But I don't want this podcast to become a pro or negative FA Cup thing. But I like if we weren't in Europe, if, nobody would be saying bin off the FA Cup. Like um, it, I don't well, even I think, think it's to do with our league position. I think you. I think you're old enough, Neil, to remember those magic days of FA Cup final day. I, I've been lucky enough to be in, being at two with Aston Villa. They are the most amazing experiences. Even though mm. we narrowly lost one and got hammered in the other, they're, they're days I will never forget for the rest of my life. So I, I really want us to go for every competition, regardless of of what the what uh, what it throws at us. And look, I, I think it could be an enormous... Um, we, we, we saw some of the players saying it's, it's nearly a drag now waiting on games to, to come around because they're used to playing Thursday, Sunday. So the FA Cup shouldn't really, bar picking up injuries, it shouldn't really deflect from what we're doing. It should, if anything, give give other players a run and uh, have them up to speed when they're, when they're called upon. So I absolutely want us to go and... Uh, and um, and go for this on Friday night. And as John correctly says here, that there's 6,000 travelling to Stamford Bridge paying £38 a piece. They want to see us go and, and, and as he says, rock the place on and off the pitch. And look, it's a marvellous opportunity. I think I think they can be beaten. Do I think we're going to hammer them? Absolutely not. It'll just be interesting to see, as you say, what what Illinois says in his presser tomorrow. Yeah, and that's, that's really what I'm looking forward to. I did toy with the idea of not putting this on until tomorrow, but uh, as I say, no, needs must and wanted to get it out today to let it breathe. And who knows what's going to break tomorrow, if anything. But uh, I might be back again tomorrow with more news as well. Um, I, I, I'm going to go back to their team for a moment, Paddy, because they're struggling at the goalkeeper position. Um, and what I mean by that is like Bobby Sanchez is going to be out, Spanish Bob is out. And they've got Dorda Petrovic in between the sticks, and, and and I know you watched the Middlesbrough game, I, I'll be honest with you, I missed a chunk of it in the bit, in the middle, I missed like 15 minutes either side of half time, um, actually probably more, probably 20 minutes of the second half, and I know he didn't have an awful lot to do, but it's like, like I think his, his relative inexperience and the fact he will be between the posts, um, I think at the weekend is something that we can pray on, that along with the fact that I'm probably going to say something slightly controversial here. There are there are signs of decline in Thiago Silva. And I know people don't want to admit that, but there are signs of decline in Thiago Silva. Uh, everybody says he like, and he is. Don't get me wrong; he's really, really good. He's what? What age is he? He's the same age as myself, I think. He's thirty nine. Um, oh, he's older than me. He's old. Look, he's older than me. Put him in a, put a picture of him in a picture of me together. That's uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's back to the Ashley Young fallacy again, um, whereby uh, myself and Ashley Young there's only six months between us. Um, but like time, Father Time is undefeated. Is what I'm getting at there. And yeah. you know, against against Middlesbrough, there was times when Colwell was put under pressure or was allowed the ball dally on the ball an awful lot. I thought he played fine. I just think it's an area, that triangle of goalkeeper and two centre halves, I think could be an area that we could attack, strangely enough, because I think a lot of people will say, Jesus, that's that's one of their strongest places. But I think it could be an area we could attack at the weekend, just mm. because of the <clears throat> unfamiliarity, I suppose, of that triangle there currently, with the goalkeeper being who he is. Yeah, um, I actually listened to, I think it was Dan Rollinson today, had a, had a podcast, I was out on the road and I was listening to it, and who scored... Rated Petkovic higher than Emmy Martinez. 
they 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 did a similar thing that we do when I ask you will I, will any of that starting team get into our team? And they had Sorry, what, come, come again. I, you who, broke up. Who scored? Had Petkovic rated higher this season than Emmy Martin is. Figure that one out. Anyway, he's only played uh, three games. Six, I think. Four games. Six, six, I think they said. Yeah. Um. And 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 look, that's that's neither here nor there. I just thought it was a bizarre thing to for for them to come up with. Um, with regards to Thiago Silva, at thirty nine years of age, he's played an awful lot of football. Now he has had a, a couple of rests in between, but I think he's played seven or eight games since just before Christmas, including a couple of those being just a half an hour cameo. Um, it does catch up with you to play on uh, to play on on uh, which was obviously a very important game. The way they lined up last night, having been one 0 down from the first leg. It will take it out of you, and I, I'm glad to be playing on Friday night and not Saturday. So it's good. It's good that they have a short turnaround, and and that's one thing I see that's hugely in our favour, especially when you're looking at a, a 39 year old playing at centre half. And don't get me wrong, he is a really, really good player. I've always admired him as a player, but time does catch up on you, absolutely. Yeah, it's as I say, time for the time is undefeated, um, un, unfortunately, or for the time being, anyway. Um, it is, and, and uh, watch him go and have an absolute storm at the weekend. Now that I specifically brought it up there, because uh, as I say, he has been one of the best defenders in world football over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, you know, so it, it's 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 he's definitely somebody that needs to be respected. Um, I'm talking more so about the communication triangle between those guys played against Middlesbrough. There wasn't an awful lot of pressure on them, um, and and, and uh, yeah, as I like. We saw we got a glimpse of Morgan Rogers, who potentially could be on Aston Villa's radar, Paddy. Uh, I know the reception was mixed from a lot of people um, on Twitter anyway last night. And then a lot of people, like, and then he bangs one into the back of the net, which I think was a beautiful finish. Um, mm-hmm. uh, what did you make of him? Like, And it's, it's look, I'm going to preface this. It's bloody stupid looking at one game and thinking, thinking that you can spot absolutely, yeah, especially a game whereby the player was absolutely 100% tasked with sitting on Casero outside out, out of possession and wasn't yeah. at fault for any of the goals and was living off scraps up to, uh, up top as well against a team that's over, over, way overpowered than than that Middlesbrough team is but like what did you make from I haven't spoken to you since the since the news broke Paddy and uh, when you were watching it last night what did you make of him well I, I watched him as, as tightly as I could in a game that was largely played in the opposition's half he didn't he didn't. Uh, he didn't get an awful lot of touches of the ball, uh, as you say. He did a lot of tracking back. Didn't put himself about in tackles or anything like that. He did, he's not that type of player. The one thing that stood out for me from looking at him is that he's not a very quick player. If if that's I'm trying to be kind here, and and when when I said it to you yesterday, you you said uh, he runs a bit like David Ginola. No, I don't think hmm. he's as quick as David Ginola, but he just looks like a fella. Now, in fairness, when I he's on the Jab- ball, Jab- Jab- was that quick. That's the thing. I just think that I just think that he he had it. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah, he he he, he just has this laboured run, but he holds onto the ball. He doesn't give the ball away in that mm-hmm. run, and that's the most important thing. And I think I think he's the kind of player that could be suited in 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 games like we played over over the the last few weeks, like Sheffield United, like Burnley, like. Uh, like um, I forgot the other one, Everton, where he can hold up the ball around the box and bring other players into play, or he could possibly take a player on and 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 get the ball across the six yard box. He he looks like a player, absolutely. Just I was a bit taken back at at how slow and laboured his 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 run looked. But as you say, it's a small sample set. We watched him obviously against when Villa played Middlesbrough. I don't remember him doing anything special or standing out in that game either and it's the wrong sample set for us to be looking at when there's quite obvious gulf between Aston Villa and Middlesbrough and Chelsea and Middlesbrough so um, everybody in Middlesbrough raves about him he's quite obviously a really really good player and if if the management team think he's up to it he's definitely worth a punt at what they're saying what eight nine million for a player yeah, to yeah, play in him, yeah, a bit, yeah, maybe, maybe a bit higher than that. Regardless, yeah. it, it won't be too much higher. Like, well, it won't be because we 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 can't spend that kind of money at the moment until we get some players out. So, um, that is uh that is uh 
a worry at the moment. So if you can get some players out and some players in just to freshen things up a little bit, and he definitely looks like a player that could freshen things up. But I'm not expecting the speed of a Leon Daly or a, a Moussa Diaby or an Ollie Watkins or, or even a John Duran with it. It's just a completely different player. And look, I'm all for different options. We need them in different, uh, need different horses for courses. Yeah, and once and once again, I suppose like if if you're defending with ten men behind the ball or nine men behind the ball, and you're kind of only guy up top, you know, in those both of those games, and I, I've watched other pieces. I haven't I don't think he's as slow as, as you do, because we've spoken about it today, but he does have a strange running style. I do I I, I do agree with that. Um, I think specifically last night there was a potential of him when the ball got to him, maybe he was holding the ball up for to, to allow people to get into the attack there was a couple of instances there when um uh a couple of instances there when he showed some really really good feet specifically in around the box it was a short corner routine he came out to it ball came to him passed it off took it back again and had an absolutely wor- worldly of a flick around the player in the box which is something we do not do at aston villa and we've never yeah. done it for ages and, the, and what the reason i'm getting that is not the worldly flick is do things like that to try and win penalties. Like the defenders could just look at him do it because he could not stick out a leg. There's, as you said, there's horses for courses and there's other attributes to the game. We saw him bend one into the bottom corner. You go look at any of his goals in the League Cup this season. If the, if the man gets in in his right foot, um, you know, and he gets an opportunity to bend one around around the player, it's getting damn close to going into the back of the net. Like he just he just he has a preferred move. And he's really good at it, it seems. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and as Mike Logan said there, at Man City, everyone raved about him. I think it was six million um, Man City paid for him from West Brom. West Brom, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, look. Um, I, he's certainly not the finished article. If he comes into this team, I think we won't see him up top as a striker as well. I don't think we'll see that. I think we'll see him off the left. Um, but hey, I would look. imagine so. And look, he's it, well, what I failed to fail to say as well. He's a big, burly lad. He's well able to hold off defenders. And um, he did get a shot away in one of the corner routines as well. Petkovic got down. It was it that was, was the one. Up, that's but, the one I'm talking yeah. about. The one where he flicked yeah. around and, and ended the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he, he like he's he's definitely wants to be involved in the game. He's a decent, decent player. I I'm I'm just nitpicking by saying I was surprised. I, I mm. thought he, he was he was quicker than. Than what I saw last night, but as I said, it's one sample set. I might try and watch the yeah. Middlesbrough game if we haven't signed them by the weekend. I might try and watch Middlesbrough, seeing as it's going to be a, a long weekend with Villa playing on a Friday night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've watched about eight of his games now, and as I said, it's, uh, he's he's interesting. I and um, you can see that he certainly has talent, all right. But uh, he's an unfinished article, and, and like he's not going to come into the team. I, I, I'm comfortable enough in saying that he's not going to come into into the team. And uh, be our. I'm trying to think of a player. Like I think he'll, he'll probably have a slower transition or a different type of player or whatever. Tali Watkins, um, you know, yeah. from that point of view. But he but look, the, the way I see it, it but... at the end of the game. I I think he's probably going to offer us more in the English game and in the Premier League. I think I think he he could offer us more than Zaniolo does. That was the That's point. That's not Zaniolo. I I, I, I think he's Zaniolo's. If he signs, he's Zaniolo's replacement. That's the way I see it. It, it could be a case that we're looking at Zaniolo going back. Not not that I'm crying for him to go back or anything like that. I'd love to see him work out. But that's what I think is happening here. That's the way it looks to me. Um, could be completely wide of the mark. This could be one that he, he could he could do exactly the same thing as he's done with the guy at Red Star Belgrade. I'm not even going to attempt his name. And send him back to Middlesbrough for the rest of the season. We just don't know. So we'll, we'll, we'll bear with it and see. Lenny, if we sign him and if that happens, I, I like, like, ha, yeah, uh, whatever about a right back when we bring back Ken Kessler Hayden. If we do that with <laughs> a, an attacking player, uh, I, I'd spend the bones of 20 million over the course of, uh, of a January and neither of the two of them can play with you down the stretch. <laughs> I, I don't want to see the, I don't want to, I don't want to see Twitter if that happens. I don't want to see it. I think I might just come off Twitter altogether um, if that's the case, but um, could happen could happen it's not beyond the realms of possibility uh, at all Paddy there's been a couple of other bits of transfer news recently um, Leander Dendonker looks like he's making his way to Naples um, uh, I, I've, I think it's a super move for him I think it's a really? move I think it's a super move for the club as well because I think there's a high possibility he could go out there and play well in the Italian league because I think it suits I think it would suit his style it suits his, his pace so of play yeah. and, uh, and, and I think the reason that why I say it's a good, good move is because 
obviously paying his full wages for the rest of this year. He's not on cheap change. And, uh, you know, we want, to, we want to put him in a position whereby that buy option is an actual possibility as opposed to some of the loans maybe that we've had before where the buy option isn't a possibility um, yeah. because of the way that things are at the moment with the sustainability and the, and, and, the, and the financial fair play rules at the moment. But do you think we'll replace him, Paddy? I think that's the, that's the real discussion point over this because I think potentially whether he went to this in January or whether, whether he didn't, I think he was probably going to be shop, shopped in the summer. Yeah, I, I, I see, uh, like, when, when you see Tim, Tim Eric Booneman around the squad, you, you'd have to believe that he is the replacement. Now, whether whether we feel we need somebody else or that John McGinn could maybe do that role if we need him to, that could be the case too. But I, I think I, I just get a feeling in my gut that he won't be replaced, as in he will be replaced for another player, but maybe not in that position. That's ju- that's just my feeling on it. I've nothing, to, no, I've nothing, I've no uh, insider knowledge to see, to say that that's the way it is. But if if we've got a player there that's more than capable, um, you only have to see a picture of Tim Uruk Boonham go up on on the internet and QPR fans absolutely go nuts for it. They want him back. They know he's a decent player. We know he's a decent player. And I think I think slowly but surely uh, Unai Emery is going to develop a little bit of trust in him and start putting him in there. But when when we've the game sewn up, just to get enough uh, enough uh, minutes in the legs and uh, enough confidence on the ball, so that player is there, I believe, to replace uh, Leander Dendonker if we need to. So for me, it's probably another position that we strengthen in if if we if we manage to offload Dendonker. Yeah, look, we've been linked with Mandela Kate. I see people, see people talk about him in the in in the um, the comments there as well. Twenty one year old uh, Belgian player, is Belgian cap as well. I might do a piece on him playing with Antwerp at the moment, and and there's just a couple of players at that Antwerp team that are really um, really really Belgium. interesting. I suppose Bel- Belgian Belgian league football is actually re- is once again is becoming. It's always kind of been a hotbed for young talent. But the young talent is actually getting younger and getting opportunities younger at the moment. And there's like, how come certain leagues are just really good at scouting and getting players before anybody knows them? It's like, uh, the, the, yeah, Belgian league is going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment um, with regards to it. And, and I think some of those clubs are going to get pretty wealthy from, relatively speaking, from selling those players on um, over the course of the, the, um, the, the next few years, like with, with Antwerp, obviously the big their big prize jewel there is Arthur Vermeer, and um, who's lo- likely on his way to Atletico Madrid. Um, Barcelona wanted to sign him. He's he's a cracking player, like just a really really good player. Um, and uh, yeah, as as I say, it's uh, he's interesting. I might do a little piece on on him. Obviously, nowhere near the finished article, but somebody that could come in and give you that that tough tackling um capability. This uh, the oh, am I frozen? I don't no, know. Can you guys can, see me? Can you guys? Oh, you guys, you can still hear me. My my whole free, yeah. screen froze there. Um, good passer of the ball, good pivot player. Should I say? Um, five, he's I think he's just under six foot. But yeah, we'll we'll uh, one of those players that tackle standing up, like uh, like Nakamba. That's what I like about him. Anyway, we'll, we might do a little piece on him. Um, because I only I took a look at him today for for a bit, but I have been watching some players there. Uh, Arthur Vermeer, realistically, um, on that Antwerp team, and and, and this guy yeah. Mandela Keita stands out from playing alongside him. And also, Paddy, we were linked with uh, Florian Nohaus from uh, Gladbach, um, German international. Uh, pretty much, to be honest with you, the German John McGinn. That's how I would describe him, the German <laughs> John McGinn. It looks like things have gone cold on that one. Romano came out today and said not much in that one. Um, but uh, I suppose money dependent, and if we could get him in on a loan, mm-hmm. I think he would be uh, like that's the kind of signing I could see Unai making, and I could I could make a very very strong argument that he would be able to come in and replace what Den Donker does in the team, and and give John McGinn a break, you know, give John McGinn a break, and he's if, if it was needed. So you know, there's there's a bit of talk behind some of the names. Not all of them are going to come true. Some of them are going to be total horse shit. Like you know, I'm, I'm not even sure if the Nyhouse thing was was ever even real. And people are going to pluck Aston Villa from the ether to um to pair them up with players as well. Uh, so it's it's just going to be an interesting last couple of days. Um, I think for incomings. I think I think the incomings. I think the Nyhouse one is the one I'm most excited about of of, of what we've spoken about mm. because. 
there's great potential in there and it just came completely out of left field. So it'll be interesting to see if anything progresses from it because I think he'd be a major asset to put into our team. I really do. Um, the the elephant in the room here is we probably need to get Philip Coutinho off the books full time. We need to probably shift Bertrand Traore and probably yeah, Callum Chambers. Again. Yeah. And the Coutinho stuff, Coutinho to Inter Miami has gone cold again. Um, now they're they're back in pre season training, so you'd have to think if it was going to be done, it would be it would be done quickly. But isn't there some rule that they can sign players up until the middle of February? Is that correct? Yeah, it, yeah, because they, they start they're... later. Yeah, so we can't yeah, sign anybody. Yeah. We can't sign anybody from there after the thirty first of January. But they can take our players after the thirty first of January. So that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too worried if that's gone cold. But like. I'd, I'd prefer to take Saudi money and, and <laughs> maybe there's a bigger uh, transfer fee on offer. I've no idea. I've nothing to base that on. Yeah. But but himself, um, Bertrand Triori, Callum Chambers, as far as I'm aware, have all been told that they, they, yeah. they'd be welcomed if they could get a, a, a permanent transfer there. Um, I don't know if anything's happening behind the scenes. There's, there's been no talk of Chambers or Bertrand Triori. I was hoping he would... Uh, score a few more goals other than penalties and, and light up that African Cup of Nations that I'm not watching. So uh, I know he has scored penalties and, and took one very well, apparently. But um, yeah, not, not on my radar whatsoever. So I'm uh, I'm hoping that something gets done because th- these are the kind of things that balance the books from financial fair play for us. So fingers crossed they can do something. Yeah, I just happened to, uh, to search there to see when the Saudi transfer window is open because Burkina Faso, if I'm not mistaken, are out again on the 26th. I think they're out again on Friday. No, they're not. They're not. Out. They're out on on uh, the 30th, which is deadline day in Saudi Arabia. They're out on the 30th of January again. They just like to be honest with you, Bertie seemed like a fellow who could end up going to Saudi for five million or whatever. You know, based on a good yeah, Af- like- Afghan. Um, I think I think Neil, the whole Saudi thing has gone sour. They're not getting the the fans in the gate. Mm. I'd say there's a lot of people scratching their head to to what the hell they were they're investing in there. The, there's talks of the likes of uh, we saw Jordan Henderson come back. There's talks of Benzema going back to Ligue 1. There's a lot going on. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be too hopeful that we're going to sell anybody for any decent money to the Saudis. Yeah, I I, I personally think there's a lot more money to be burned through there yet. Um, but I've also said that is an unsustainable situation. Um, it is a false economy. I think from yeah. fo- from a footballing point of view, it's a false economy. From a sporting point of view, in look, we won't get into it. We won't get into it because look, it's a country that's that's obviously trying to diversify from the oil trade and so on as the oil stocks i'm not gonna say they're dwindling but they're obviously dwindling because they're pumping it out of the ground or whatever else but um they're trying to razzmatazz the you know their, their their tourism and stuff like that it just ain't happening um from that it hasn't isn't happening as quickly as they wanted to and i think they wanted to put it into warp drive specifically with football but yeah you've mentioned like there's a lot of footballers that don't seem happy there like emmerich report basically coming out going i don't know what the hell's going on here like um and Firmino wanting out I, th- I think there could be uh, there, there could be one or two things will happen and this is going to sound stupid because obviously one of these two things is definitely going to happen. There could be players to be got there to be poached later on in the transfer window on deadline day or there will be players that will be stubbornly held on to in that league because they don't need to sell, they don't need to get rid of them. They, they can, no, they can no. have 60 yeah. billion to, in, in a wealth fund there to, 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 to buy it. But as we all say, you know, the biggest thing with regards to the Saudi league is somebody needs to call bullshit on the, on the, 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 the huge transfers of essentially um, like, like Newcastle. We just have to call bullshit on that. Like, you know, somebody has to stand up and say, lads, this ain't, Look, I don't know. I don't know what, what can be done about it. And um, it's for it's other people because, like, realistically speaking, they're not doing anything wrong. But it's just it's it's a circumnavigation, and uh, and 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 that ain't ain't the best thing for football, really. And not that any Newcastle United fan does care or should care, because we would be in exactly the same boat if we um, if we were able to do it. But um, from a fairness point of view, I think it should be discussed. Um. 
There was one other person. There was one other thing I wanted to chat about, Paddy. Oh, yeah, we lost that goalkeeper, it looks like. We were hijacked by Brentford. Thomas Frank came in and uh, under the table did a deal with uh, the Icelandic goalkeeper who, yeah, I'm not going to try and butcher that name. Not a hope am I going to try and butcher that name on the podcast, but uh, looked like a pretty promising goalkeeper. I will. I don't think I will ever do a scouting series on a goalkeeper because uh, I, do, I do not know anything about uh, that position. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave it up that we've just lost out in the goalkeeper and who knows he could turn out to be the next Peter Cech he could turn out to be the next Mike Lokes no offence to Mike Lokes Peter Peter Cech or Peter Enkelman there we go that's what we'll say um, and, and I don't they, know who's obviously... Mike Lokes or Peter Enkelman it seems they've got great plans for for Philip Marshall too. I know he I know he's gone out on loan, yeah, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I think he's a more than able. Um, like they trusted him in in Mostar, so uh, he's a more than able replacement to to have there. Uh, albeit they they've obviously sent him out to get to get some experience, which obviously he's needed as well. So uh, yeah, I'm not worried about the goalkeeping department. I'd be worried if if I heard that Emmy Martinez was considering going somewhere, but. Uh, um, for now, that's that's the least of my worries. Other than that, he stays fit for the rest of the season. Yeah, um, and look, Robin Olds is still there as well. Like you, you, it's got, like your goalkeepers, your goalkeepers, sub goalkeepers should be good, but they're only ever needed in 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 case they're needed. You know, so it's not and, like and we don't see it. Yeah, I, I like this as well. The size says yeah, yeah. she's been playing all year in the Polish yeah. league. We do have a crop of young players, but. Obviously, the maturity, uh, the maturing of a goalkeeper comes w- like it literally only comes with age and playing games. And when you're a goalkeeper exactly. that's so yeah. young, if you're sitting on the bench the whole time for your parent club, Emmy Martin is probably point not in case the, the exception to the rule. You're not really getting much better. You know, you need to con- con- concede that holder. You need to come out for a cross and get creamed between two, between two, a striker and a defender. You know, it's just one of those contact and mental mentally draining positions that you need to have bad things happen and re- to see if you can recover from them because you know mm. goalkeeping there for everyone well and look was, look 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 at the money that, that that man united has spent on onana he, he'd been a shit show left right and center he's been dropped by cameroon Some mad stuff going on with, with, with goalkeepers around the premier league arsenal swapping up their goalkeepers uh chelsea the same um you know they, they could probably do with a better goalkeeper than, than Spanish Bob. So there's there's a lot of of uh, we take ourselves Man City and Man and Liverpool out of it. Um, you know even even Newcastle lost their goalkeepers. There's just so much going on with goalkeepers. We've just got to protect ours and keep them fit and uh, keep them out of trouble. <laughs> Paddy, before we wrap up, talk to me a bit about the John Duran. Situation. Just sounds situation? To me, Is it just a lot of heart? Just, just sounds to me like he's got a really good agent that's trying to pressure us into giving him more game time. I can't see how, with with the minimal experience that he's had, that he's been linked with Chelsea. Don't get it. AC Milan. I could kind of get it because he would have been a cheap option to bring in there. Um, I just, I just don't see how this is a runner, and I don't see how we would be letting him go out the door for anything less than we paid for him either. And we would need a replacement coming in in that position. I don't believe he lets him go without a replacement there. And I do think we need we, we do need to be able to give Ollie Watkins a break or to mix things up by bringing on a, a big striker like him to do something different. Yeah, and, and, and like my view on it is if Chelsea want him, pony up. You've done it for lesser players that have no Premier League experience. Pony up. <laughs> like it, It's as simple as this. If Chelsea came knocking on our door, I'm going, right, we bought him for 18 million. Double it. We'll sell him to you. Yeah. Double it. That's the only way, that, that's or, the way they're selling to Chelsea. That's the only way I can see it. Here. Swap him for Amanda Borgia if you, if, you, if you really want him. Broya or whatever, however you pronounce it. If you, re, if you wanted him. But like, if they think that he's worth fifty million, and, and he probably, probably he isn't. Like, but um, based on the fact that he scored Premier League goals, um, and he scored goals in 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 uh, in England, and he's got a bigger CV within Europe, mm-hmm. you know, we could we could just easily turn around and say, yeah, but look, you know, 
this is what we value at, like or like take it or leave it. You know, it's simple as that. And I think that's going to be uh, that's that's going to be. I I I I, Rich, I I don't think twenty will do it. I don't. But think I think will, I, I think I think twenty does it if it if it's a AC Milan or a I don't know Atletico Bilbao. But I think if you're selling to a rival, that inflates the prices. That's I think she's right in that situation. But yeah, it, because I mean, we're selling yeah. because we're selling to Chelsea, I think I think you're more correct in that. Okay. Come on, give us 36 million. You know, we've brought this player in. We, we've only had him for a year. If you really want him, give us 36 million. I don't want to see uh, him go. I want to see him grow up a little bit. I want to see him put on his big boy's pants now and and grab the second half of the season. By the scruff of the neck, he's a chance to be in, involved in potentially um, a great run in 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 a, a run that we haven't seen in, in 30 odd years in, in the league. We're, we're still in Europe. We're still in the FA Cup. There's huge potential there for him. Why he would be pissed off with, with, with getting the game time he is when he hasn't exactly set the place on fire when he come on would be beyond me. So put the big boys' pants on, pony up and get a few goals and uh, then we can talk about it in the summer. That's the way I think. Yeah. I'd be surprised if let it go Bilbao bought him because sure, can't they only sign players from, uh, from the... <laughs> Well, I just plucked it. I just, I just plucked I know, it out of the sky. You know what I mean? Just for, <laughs> for the AC Milan piece as well, I suppose. Like the 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 Serie A league is going, and I think AC Milan are. Uh, you'll notice a lot of the transfer business they've done have been bringing in younger players pre previously, and Inter have started to do it too, specifically defenders. Uh, bring them in, train them up within the league, and and um and maybe sell them onwards. Um, and it's because the, the creator Cresisha, I think is how you pronounce it. They had a tax law. In um in Italy specifically for foreign footballers, where you could go there and I don't think you paid any tax up to a certain level or whatever like that. Now that's just been gone, uh, and now it's 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 been um it's it, it's it's now gone. So like you're going to see an awful lot more uh, internal transfers within Italy. You're going to go back to that old system they had within Serie A, where players freely moved around from club to club to club. And, and some, it's not even going to be kind of designated players, but I, I think the money within, I, I think it's a poor move from Serie A, but I can understand why it's been done by the by the government from a governmental point of view. Um, but uh, also, it, there's there's two ways of thinking about it. The Italian game could grow itself by by the nature of having more Italian players, which they've always been really good at in that league, but nurturing players a small bit more. But also, you know. The, the the money pit there is 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 no longer freely there, so it's an interesting one when you see them being linked. It's it's uh, it's something that uh, just to bear that one in mind with the change to to, to structures, mm -hmm. tax aid <coughs> structures there, there too. Um, I don't, I just don't see him moving. I don't see the Duran moving. I think it's an awful lot of huff and puff, um, from an awful lot of areas. And as I said on Twitter, you know, Aston Villa should be saying to everybody, right, if you're coming to the table, have a decent offer. You know, have an offer that's going to knock our socks off because we're, you know, we're, we're we're not in a footballing position to sell at the minute, as in from the point of view of our squad ain't exactly inflated. And secondly, we we can navigate financial fair play at the moment. We will need to sell to buy, um, and potentially in the summer that's going to be different with with when the new sets of accounts are out and stuff like that, and you've got increased revenues and so on. But we do need to sell to buy in this window or we do need to maneuver players in this window so like come to us it's not going to be wasting our time that's what i would be saying to everyone i'd literally have what i put up on twitter there um saying if you're coming to us in deadline day please piss off because we don't have a chance to replace this player and we don't have an overinflated squad and um, that should be the answering machine be an honest yeah. actor don't we are looking for a bargain if you want one of our players give us an offer that's going to knock our socks off get to the top of the queue otherwise don't bother ringing it's as simple as that and it doesn't matter, it, it, I, th I think, who it is. Even if it's Callum Chambers, we want to get at least something back for him, you know? Um, yeah. Don't be coming to us with a loan saying, we'll take him off, off your hands, you pay 100% of his wages and we'll pay you 25 grand between now and the end of the season. No. You know, we don't Is, need it, is it Wednesday that the, the transfer window closes or is it's it the night that we're It's It's the 1st of February. So yeah. it's Thursday. So, so, okay, so there's a bit of time. No, okay. Is, I, I don't. I don't envisage. Yeah. I don't envisage yeah, just um, selling anybody on transfer window day, on transfer deadline day. If we got players out the door, then we might be bringing someone in. But I would expect some kind of statement after the the Newcastle game that we're probably done. If if because that's what will be asked by uh, by TNT when they're interviewing Unai Emery afterwards. So um, 
we'll see. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. It's a uh, yeah, and look, I I do think there's going to be like there's going to be names plucked and and pulled and 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 rumored left, right, and center. I think actually even like starting tomorrow, or it started already, I suppose, at the Florian Neuhaus and stuff like that. But I think there's going to be more new names linked tomorrow. I think the Mandela Keita piece is just plucked. I, I'd be surprised if if uh, Villa were going to spend 30 million on him without another player potentially going out. Like I just don't see Villa spending what would realistically be and I know a lot of these players are under 21 there's FFP rules around that and does the does the Costa Nadelkovic piece uh, actually count towards our FFP now considering we've loaned him back when do the payments start blah 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 blah. there's all contractual pieces there and all kind of hocus pocus with regards to accounting yeah. there but I suppose if you're just to look at it in the ignorant man's view and say right we spend 8 million 8 million pounds including add-ons on a right back if we were to bring in um the guy from Middlesbrough, Morgan Rogers, could be another 10 million. That's 18 million. Doesn't seem like an awful lot. Then you talk about potentially we're bringing in Mandela Cater or somebody along those ilk, that ilk for another 10 to 12 million. You know, you're racking up 30 million there, which isn't an awful lot in, in relative speak. But when your back's against the wall from a money point of view, um, and we don't know how relative that is, you know, but it seems to be endemic across the league. I think a lot of a lot of teams across the league have started to cross their legs now because they've gone, Jesus, the Forest and Everton stuff is actually serious enough. So, yeah, I think, you know what, this January, I, and you can see it, this January has been quiet. Bar Spurs, mm. um, really. I, like, who has done an awful lot of business in this league? Who's done an awful lot of meaningful business in this league? Like, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just unfortunate that Spurs. And people... We're full of piss and vinegar about Daniel Levy, um, and and he's penny pinching at Spurs and so on, and uh, you know a lot of our fans were, and and they're in an absolutely unenviable position now with their revenue streams that they have from that ground and from the NFL stuff and just from the way the club is run. FFP is not an issue for them. It ain't, and that's because they've got a brilliant revenue system, and that's where we need to get to. And it's it's tough, and you know I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about about prices going up. It's a lot of, it's stuff like that. I want them to look at other areas and, and grow that revenue, grow grow the commercial base, and and flog as many short. Like we we even spoke about it there, Patty. And sorry, I'm going on a bit of a rant now, a bit of a bit of a, a an offward turn here, but. Like Chris Heck and, and the club came out about the Adidas thing, and we want this to be um, our, our shirt sold all over the world. That's fine. That's great. I have that ambition, and I want that ambition for the club. But Jesus, it isn't even in sale in Ireland at the moment. You cannot buy an Aston Villa football shirt. If I walk into the shop tomorrow, I will just be hit with Man United, Liverpool, and Celtic jerseys. That's it. I will not like. I, I would have to. I would have to travel to over a hundred sports shops. I'd say before I get a, a Villa jersey. And that wasn't always the case. So yeah, you know, start closer to home, build your build your branches outwards, like and and, and see what happens from. There. And they will do that. They will do mm. that. But uh, and merchandising is where you're going to make your money. Absolutely, and and it it's not made by uh, by charging way over the odds to sh- to ship them around the world. So hopefully that that you know everything's been looked at at the moment. We know everything's been gone through. Like a. a with a fine tooth comb, and I presume the merchandising end is as well. Um, I'd love to see the stand being built. I just think it's it's been kicked down the road for me. And as you say, listening to um, the experts talk about what what Spurs have done with bringing the NFL games in, but bringing Beyonce there for five nights, this is huge for the club. Absolutely huge. I know Spurs are, are based in London, and they've such a huge catchment area. But like, there's there's twelve million in the periphery of of, of Birmingham and and all, and all the commuter towns as far away as Stoke and Leicester and Nottingham. There's there's a lot that can be done. Um, hopefully we've got the right man to do it. And look, while 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 a lot of things are pissing pissing people off at the moment, we, he's he's got he's got a an unenviable jo- unenviable job on his hands. And uh, we 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 dragged him over the coals over the, the north stand already. And uh, you know, we we they they said they're going to put three thousand extra seats in. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to put them, or whether they're all going to be standing, or, or what the crack is. But uh, it, it's going to be an interesting summer and an interesting end to this season because, uh, yeah, it's we the, the the team are performing on the pitch, and I hope that keeps going. And ultimately, that's the most important thing. But there's some big decisions to be made off the pitch, and we'll just have to wait for the summer for those. 
Yeah, and, and and I'll go back to it again. I know everybody's talking about new stadium, new stadia and stuff like that, and they will come. Um, the easier route to getting money into this club is merchandising sales. Is like, like realistically, we should be looking at a situation whereby, fuck it, every every Victoria Gomez fan, every the uh, Vizsla Kobe fan is, is is wearing an Aston Villa jersey or has an opportunity to buy an Aston Villa jersey. You know, 100%. break those markets. Like we're we're thirty years behind Manchester United in this, and we're thirty we're thirty years behind Manchester United. We're we're fifteen years. We're since Van der Vaart probably and, and actually since Edgar David signed for signed for Spurs. That's how far we're behind Spurs with regards to this. Um, yeah. you know, so like anybody who thinks that we can just literally. The stroke of a pen fallacy here. We can just write a new planning permission for the for and, and add an extra ten thousand seats onto our stadium. That's that's fine. That's fine. That's grand. And it, it, it obviously it's a massive thing. It, it's getting our merchandise out there. It's winning. It's creating a winning culture. Number one. It's getting lucky in in maybe getting to the Champions League this year, and and then it's it's just building on those revenues afterwards. Um, mm-hmm. because we can't go from seventeen million on on match day revenue. All the way up to the two hundred and thirties, like uh, I think it is that Man United and Spurs are. You can't do that overnight, and uh, because you're not a proven entity, and we're not a proven yeah. entity for commercial and business people only want proven entities. Manchester mm. United don't make like Manchester United Stadium. Yes, it's got X amount of seats and it's got more seats than Villa Park or whatever. But their a lot of their 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 bottom line comes from selling shirts in the Far East and selling shirts in of course, wherever they go. Yeah. And and that's the that's the easier win for Aston Villa, but that comes with winning on the field. And yeah. the, the infrastructural stuff is tougher. It's tougher. It's tougher, and it's it's easier for people to see it and, and put their arms around it, as as you say. But it is a bit tougher. Um. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's that was a side show that I never thought I'd go down. <laughs> uh, you know, so 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 it is. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's much else. I I know. I feel like I've missed tons. Um. And uh, like and 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 a lot of just on the commercial stuff as well. A lot of stuff is I I do talk to Kieran Maguire. I've had him on the podcast before. The price of football, and he basically like like he knows that Villa at the moment are like his exact things were make sure that Nez, Nez uh, uh, Wes and Nassif don't fly too often. You know you don't want one of their planes going down because Villa are fucked if they do. Essentially is 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 what he said. And look, you know. That's coming from somebody who looks at this for a living, you know. So uh, mm. the piper has to be paid at some stage, and 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 they know that, you know, they know yeah. that it's not. It's and not look, what I look, Neil, regardless of of everything you're saying there, if we get Champions League football and we're beamed into to terrestrial television all around the world, people will buy shorts, and that's where we need to be. And if we can pull this off this year, it would be absolutely monumental for our. Uh, for, for everything, for, for the popularity of the club, for the for the finances, and just the people around the world know who we are. Who who is this club with that majestic colour on their short? Who are they? I want to get to know them, like we did when we were kids looking at looking at the, the great Aston Villa teams of the nineties. So that's where that's what we need to do to the kids around the world is is get them interested in Aston Villa. That might take um a, a, an amazing signing to come in at some stage, um, or or somebody at the back end of his career to come in, a, a Messi or a Benzema or someone like that. And look, if who who would rule that out? If you automatically look at that Champions League money that's going to come through the door if we if we get there at the end of the year. But the most important thing is we keep going on the pitch and not give anybody any opportunity to to take that off us. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that's a good place to end the podcast as well. Very little talk. Very sh- well. At least we got to talk about Chelsea, about the actual name of the podcast. At least we got to talking about it first in the podcast. Now, usually we're we started like twenty five minutes in, um, but at least we got to talking about it first now. So, uh, there's people that regularly message me and say, "My God, when is the when when are you actually going to start talking about about the topic?" <laughs> uh, we're learning. We're learning. We're not professionals in this. Before we do go, though, guys, there's 158 of you here. Just want to say a massive thank you to everybody. 161 now. We've had three people join. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to everybody. Like we, we, our, our live podcast is 10 days away, um, where we will be talking to to Paul McGrath, and uh, I am tingling with excitement at it. And we've sold 200 and. 
220 plus tickets, I think, at this stage. We've sold for it. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who has bought, bought a ticket, everybody who couldn't buy a ticket, who couldn't be there, who's wished us well with it, everybody who's reached out and said they'd love to have been there, uh, and so on. It's like this is, I, I'm, as I say, I'm tingling with incitement for it. It's a real bucket list moment for me. And I just want to say thank you to absolutely everybody um, for allowing us to, to, I suppose, uh, for wanting to come to see us, number one. And second of all, um, you know, I think it's going to be a fantastic day. Um, yeah, and that's really it. You know, we'll talk about it more, I suppose, closer to the event. Tickets are still on sale. Um I think there was six, uh, six was what the ticketing company told me uh, this morning were still left uh, up for sale. Um, you know, so if anybody is interested in a ticket, the link is in the in the bio for this as well. And there are t- still tickets for sale um, for that on the 3rd of February. So if anybody's interested, go get your tickets and we'll see you there. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great day. As I say, for those of you who don't know what the rundown of the day is, they'll obviously be meeting and greet with Paul McGrath. will be signing of autographs to be fixed, uh, photographs taken with the great man himself. Then we'll talk to him on stage for the bones of an hour. Then we're going to watch, uh, watch, uh, we're going to do Team Sheet Tantrum. Don't forget. Uh, we have to, we have to do that as well. And then, um, we're going to watch Sheffield United and Aston Villa. And we have a DJ booked. We've literally have the venue from one o'clock in the day all the way through to like, 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night so it's going to be a right ripper of a session and uh yeah as i say if anybody was on the fence go get your tickets there's only a few of them left but i want to say thank you to absolutely everybody who's for their well wishes on it as well it means an awful lot yeah um or you reiterate everything you say and kieran asks friday night meet up anyone kieran information to come and i'll tell people where to go that are in uh, limerick on yeah. the friday night um, if anybody is in Limerick, we will try and have a meet up. Um, here, here's a guy with two with two kids. One that's just over two, and one who's eight months good. Yeah, we're going to meet up for a big big session on the Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my time ain't my own, but I will definitely try my best. But Paddy, on the <laughs> other hand, Paddy, Paddy's time is his. So Paddy can definitely make all the plans he can make. Yeah, uh, but we will. Yeah, that's that's thing. We'll we'll try and meet all meet up in a pub. Uh, for people out there, because I know there's a lot of people coming over from Birmingham making a weekend of it, and Limerick isn't the biggest city in the world, but there are definitely nice places to go for a pint in Limerick. Definitely. So uh, I'd be shame. Many of them. This happen, does. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I am. Um, well, I think we're going to leave it at that, Paddy. We will be, I'll start that again. We will be back with a, 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 a team sheet tantrum on Friday. Um, we probably won't have a post match afterwards, um, directly afterwards, but we will definitely be here with a team sheet tantrum and then a post match probably later on in the weekend. So I hope you join us for that as well. And obviously, any breaking transfer news or anything like that, um, we will come and chat to you on that too. But uh, thanks a million, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening. And all that's left to say, I suppose, is stay safe, stay healthy, and up the villa. Up the villa. <laughs>